We're back. Uh, Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State in central Nigeria has written to the President Muhammad Buhari for firearm licensing for the newly established Benue State Community Volunteer Guards inaugurated last week to provide surveillance and intelligence gathering in the wake of persistent herdsmen attacks in Benue State. Uh, Otom will disclose this on Monday while playing host to a delegation from the Northern Christian Women Coalition at Government House in Makodi says the move became necessary following the legitimated process of establishing the guards to help restore peace to troubled parts of the state. He said the president, he knows, will approve his request to also empower his people against their traducers and, or at best, leave uh, room for fair level of response in the defense of his people. Uh, this is an interesting scenario, and we're asking, as far as the security situation in the country is concerned, is this what Nigeria needs at this point to tackle its worsening insecurity? We have joining us to discuss this, Shegun Shopiton, who is the chairman of ACT Network. He is in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Shegun Shopiton, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on the, the emergence of, you know, regional and state vigilante groups, uh, neighborhood, neighborhood watch groups and all that uh, in different parts of the country? In the Southwest, they've started the Omoteko call. It's been on for some time. We've seen what they've done in Ondo State uh, with arrests. You go to the Southeast, they have um, uh, Ebibuagu, which hasn't been so successful. Um, in some parts of the South-South, for instance, in, uh, in River State, they have their own a local vigilante group known as OSPAC uh, in, in Cross River State. They have something going on there as well. So we have pockets of all these things going on. In the northern part of the country, you have the um, uh, civilian JTF, as they're called. Um, are these what we need at this point, you know, to nip insecurity in the bud? Well, um, thanks again for having me. Uh, you know, there's a common saying that um, nature has a vacuum. And I think that what we're seeing now um, is a vacuum being filled, basically. Um, you can't have a country as vast as Nigeria is in terms of landmass, um, as diverse as it is in terms of its ethnic configuration, you know, um, and think that you can effectively provide security um, across the entire length and breadth of that landmass from a central command point. It's not going to work. I mean, it, it's, we, we have the evidence of uh, the years of history um, to, 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 to prove this. It's not working. Um, so, so what you're seeing is simply nature trying to take care of the vacuum. Um, a lot of these politicians that are put in this um, machineries and processes in place don't necessarily support um, devolution of powers, don't necessarily support um, the restructuring and quote uh, and debate, you know, but they are confronted with an existential threat. And this is pushing them to look for solutions. You know, and, and, and if you if you if you examine these things carefully, you see that Amotekwe is beginning to record some some successes because they're on ground and they have the confidence of the people on ground, of the communities on ground. So you know, so it just goes without saying that these things are necessary, these things need to be done. Since the federal government and the you know, and when I say federal government, I mean both the executive and the legislature. Since they have refused to address the issue of state policing and community policing um, properly, confront it head on, deal with the potential challenges that may lie there. You know, um, what you have now happening is that um, you know the world is simply is simply responding. You know, so it, it's it's really it's really really as simple as that. All right. Uh, we're looking at uh, the the intention of the governor here. I mean, this group has been formed, the um, Volunteer Guards 
in 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 Benue State has been formed or have been formed already. But the governor is talking about AK forty seven, uh, you know, grade weaponry. Um, when we look at the vigilantes model of of, of security, uh, you know, community policing and all that, do we need to see these groups being armed with weapons as as uh, sophisticated as the AK forty seven, no matter how old it is, you know? But we know what an AK can do. Well, I mean, so the, 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 the thing is, if you ask the question, what are they being set up to do? And who are they being set up to confront? Um, because this is a supposedly a direct response to um, the assault that has been inflicted on communities in, the, in, in that region. It's not just Benue State. There's Benue State, there's Plateau State, there's Nasrawa State. Um, Araba state, you know. So if you look at the in invasion and the invading forces that are um, um, on rampage in those places, and you look at how they are armed, you know, what they come with when they come, then you have to ask yourself what kind of guns or what kind of weaponry should a, a supposed security force that is set up to, um, to uh, confront these people, what should they be armed with? We definitely can't give them game guns because those guys are coming. The least they come with are AK 47s. Some of them have um, RPGs, they have full automated machine guns, you know. So, how do you, how do you want to go about um, confronting circuit where you're, where you're armed with a game gun, where you're armed with a, with a pump action rifle, you know? So, I think that um, it's only natural that you think. To arm your security response appropriately, and the AK-47 appears to be the minimum. Um, I recognize the dangers um, in giving such a sophisticated weapon, a weapon that can fire multiple rounds, you know, um, of, of of bullets in in a few seconds. You know, to what you might say, people that are not properly trained to use them. So I, I recognize that and I think that what needs to happen is that the governor needs to provide assurances and I want to believe he might have done that in his request to, to the president to provide assurances that there is going to be a proper training of these people on how to use these things. One, um, on the on this, the psychological part of, of going around with that amount of power in your hands, it intoxicates. Right, so it, it would be very dangerous for the governor to give such arms and such weaponry to people that have not been properly conditioned to handle that power responsibly, and, and that's the flip side of the conversation. So yes, I agree that those guys need to be armed, um, you know, because you know, we can't just sit back and watch people being killed daily. You know, we become desensitized to 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 to, to this event. And these things have simply become news bits. The, 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 the human beings that are being killed have become news items and numbers. We can't continue like that. So for me, I think it's about time that state governors, regional um, authorities begin to put in responses like this. However, we need to be careful about the red flags. So when I was listening to the statement by Governor Autumn, uh, there were a number of things that he said that for me were red flags. One of them is to say, oh, this is not being set up as, um, in, uh, as a preparation for the coming elections. That's a red flag, you know. Um, another point we made was, you know, the issue of um, talking to the, the community guard, of, of what, what do they call them, right, uh, to, to be responsible with how they use their power. For me, that's another red flag. So the governor has a lot of work to do to ensure that he does not unleash monsters on his own people. You know, this is very, very critical. If you look at the Amosefo operations, they don't have AK-47s. You know, they're armed with less sophisticated weapons. And they're still, you know, achieving some level of effectiveness. But they, they, this, the problem they are confronting in the Southwest is slightly different from what's happening in Benue State and in other parts. So I, I think the argument for the AK-47 might be there, but the governor has a lot of work to ensure that this does not backfire. Very interesting that you've uh, you've raised uh, the point made by the governor, uh, where he assured that he will not be using these these uh, men uh, in the 
Benue State Community Volunteer Guards uh, to prosecute the election or to fight for votes during the election. Um, uh, so, so I was going to ask you, you know, we've looked at, uh, we've seen incidents of such similar cases, situation in River State where um, Governor Wiki tried to form River State uh, Neighborhood Watch, Safety Watch, and um, the Army did not allow that last, you know, the, the training camp was invaded and uh, the thing was uh, brought to an abrupt end. Uh, there were fears, insinuations, and, and suspicion that the governor was prepping the Neighborhood Watch in River State for uh, uh, the elections. Though he denied this, in Benway State, Thomas also have to, had to come out to deny this. Um, uh, what can be done in, because you've said neighbor abhors a vacuum and we can't continue like this, you know, with the security situation in Benway State, uh, which is our case study. So what can be done by all concerned, the government, federal government especially, to ensure that uh, such a body, if the arms are approved for them, are not used, you know, uh, to scuttle elections? Well, <laughs> that's a very, very difficult question you just asked. Um, I don't think that can be legislated. Um, I think that it's an issue that has to be addressed um, probably from a moral uh, perspective. Of course, you are going to have legislation, you know. Um, so where, if you look at some of the proposals for state policing, that we've had in the past. Um, you had, I, I read one very interesting one where um, the command structure that was proposed for the state police um, across the different states are, you know, in, the, in the country would be put together in such a manner that the governor would not be able to control them in the manner that the federal government currently controls the federal police. So, um, saying, for example, that the commissioner of police of a state police force will not be appointed by the governor, but rather by an independent panel made up of a very diverse um, uh, uh, number of groups in terms of composition, representatives from civil society, representatives from maybe judiciary, representatives from elders, elder statesmen, community leaders, um, uh, uh, royal fathers, you know, and all of that coming together to then examine people that are suggested to be to lead that 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 structure. You know, maybe that might be something that we can do because one of the things we don't want is to empower um, our governors um, with such um, such a force. Um, that to the extent that we've seen what they've done, we've seen what some of these governors have done in the past, you know, so we have to be careful about that. And, but I think it's going to be a mixture of legislation and, and, um, uh, and, and the weight of society pulling responsibility on, 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 on these governors. Um, if you look at some of the accusations that we've had in the past, Obu State had such an issue during the tenure of, um, I think it was uh, Governor Mosu, um, in, in even this issue of um, Boko Haram uh, supposedly resulted from a governor arming some thugs, in quotes, and then the thing has metamorphosed into what we have today. Um, in River State that you mentioned, we all know what happens there with the issue of the cultists and how some of them might be on the payroll or on the take from government officials. You know, so these things are there and they're real. And I think it's, it's a delicate balance, honestly. We, we, we can't... Um, we can't ignore those issues, but at the same time, I don't think that there are enough for us to say we, we shouldn't go down this road. So we need to think creatively to put in the required checks, balances, and controls to ensure that um, our politicians don't abuse the security outfits. Uh, uh, finally, let's look at the um, Ibuwagu situation in the nation southeast, um, where, of course, the governors of the five southeastern states met uh, and decided to form this uh, vigilante group. Uh, so far, it's been active in, very active in Imo State, uh, active in Anambra, in, in Abia State as well, uh, in pockets in Anambra State, but not really super, super active over there. Uh, also very active in Ibo State. So you have Anambra, Enugu, uh, not pushing uh, the throttle as much as the other states. But um, uh, like we've seen in the Awomama incident where uh, certain persons were killed, uh, suspected by 
Ibuwagu uh, operative. So the governor says it's DSS. And the natives feel it's uh, Ibuwagu. And uh, in recent days, IPUB has come out to say they will unleash venom on Ibuwagu and Imo State. Uh, this, this vigilante outfit is uh, hugely unpopular among uh, natives of southeastern Nigeria, both home and abroad. Hugely unpopular. Uh, the incidents are well documented. What went wrong with Ibuwagu that Otom and those in Benue State can learn from to avoid? You know, you know, it's a very, very interesting issue you've, you've put in, and I think for me that is actually the um, the perspective we need to look at this issue from. It's that just like we said, Nigeria is diverse. Nigeria is vast. We have a a, a complex mix of religion, uh, tribe, religion, um, influencing events across the country in different ways. Um, so when you talk about the Southeast, for example, you recall that when Ibu Biyadu was, um, first of all, proposed about three years ago, there about, if I memory serves, um, there was immediate opposition from ESN, from IPOP, and their military or militia wing. In fact, ESN actually issued threats to citizens to say, look, anybody that joins Ubiagu does so at some risk, or a statement, you know, something along those lines. Um, so, so you have a situation where um, in the Southeast, uh, the Ubiagu was supposedly set up to perhaps do exactly what Otom is trying to achieve with his own uh, guard that is trying to set up. But um, there is an internal conflict going on there between the political class and perhaps a certain segment of that of, of, of that religion. You know, people that are sympathetic to the IPOB court, people that are sympathetic to the Biafra philosophy, you know. I'm saying, look, why are these guys siding with the federal government by creating this uh, so-called security force? You know, so, so there's that conflict right there. And um, I don't think you have a similar situation in Benue, um, such that you then say, oh, maybe what, uh, what an autumn learn from what is happening there. I think the Southeast situation is a bit peculiar because IPOB is already very strong on ground. ESN is, is, you know, is ubiquitous. You really can't even say who is and who isn't sympathetic to the cause of these people. You mm -hmm. know, so um, each, each of these security outfits and each region must approach the issue based on the peculiarities that exist on ground in their own uh, communities. And I think that's just how this has to be approached. And, and again, this simply just speaks to the fact that you can't uh, police Nigeria with the central police force. The, the contending issues are simply too complex for you to achieve that. And that's why we see, you know, the insecurity that we have um, all over the country today. You know, the federal government simply can't handle this itself. And that's just the truth. All right. All right. We, we have to leave it at that. A very interesting analysis from you, Shagun Shopiton. We appreciate your time and hope to have you join us on the program sometime soon. Thanks for having me. All right, fantastic. And uh, that's the size of our package. Uh, the security situation will continue to generate reactions and discussion, and we definitely will be bringing you the analysis and coverage uh, subsequently as events unfold on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and YouTube at Plus TV Africa. On YouTube, we also are at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, and we're looking forward to engaging with you on these platforms. From all of us here, the entire crew, thank you very much for your time. My name is Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast. Good morning.